It's all a lie. NASA is lying to us about Boeing Starliner current status. It turns out that the spacecraft problem is not as simple as we thought. That's right. This was officially confirmed by a NASA astronaut. Find out everything in today's TechMap episode. But before we begin, let's subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with the latest space news. Not stranded in space is what the officials at the space agency have insisted when referring to the current situation of the Boeing Starliner and two NASA astronauts, Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams on the ISS. Simultaneously, they also emphasize that the troubled Boeing Starliner, plagued with technical issues, can take the two explorers back to Earth. So why haven't they already? Let's listen to an unnamed retired astronaut explain. Of course, they don't feel comfortable putting them in the vehicle. The retired astronaut referred to the Starliner, which transported the astronauts to the International Space Station, ISS, back in June, and is meant to return them back home. Otherwise, they would have put them in it already. The original plan says Butch and Suni just stay on the ISS for one week, but finally, nearly two months have passed. To explain away the delay, NASA officials have said repeatedly that they want to test and troubleshoot the Starliner capsule before committing to a return trip. The trouble started when helium leaks were discovered on Starliner prior to takeoff. Instead of finding the root cause and dealing with it, they opted to launch anyway, and on its journey toward the ISS, it started experiencing additional leaks and malfunctioning thrusters. Much later, they were able to find the root cause. The helium leaks may be caused by Teflon seals in an oxidizer valve bulge, restricting the flow of nitrogen tetroxide propellant. A poppet valve, similar to an inflation valve on a tire, is designed to open and close to control the flow of propellants into the thruster combustion chamber. The seals have become degraded because of exposure to propellant vapor under heat building up inside the thrusters. NASA and Boeing have gotten the brunt of the negative press for their Go Fever work style. This comes in the context that Boeing's airplanes have been in the hot water for falling doors and other quality control issues, casting a pall over its space efforts as well. As forecasted, Boeing Starliner is now stranded in space with two of its astronauts. Talking about the affair, NASA is deemed to take the major responsibility. As the manager, the national agency shouldn't escape scrutiny, and they have been less than forthcoming with issues surrounding the Starliner, which has been begrudgingly well known from the start of its development with various technical issues and aborted launches. In Starliner's pad abort test in November 2019, one of the three parachutes failed to deploy, and the capsule landed with only two parachutes. However, NASA deemed it to be safe and announced the test to be a success. This is very strange because they put the Dragon through a much more excruciating process of testing parachutes, but having a noticeable shift with a gradual relaxation of safety protocols on Starliner. As a result, four years later, the parachute problem still recurred. In the uncrewed 2019 test flight, a critical software bug was discovered just two hours before the capsule re-entered the atmosphere. If the bug had not been fixed, it could have resulted in the service module bumping back into Starliner after separation, potentially damaging the spacecraft and preventing a safe landing. Had astronauts been on board, this software glitch could have led to the loss of human lives. A NASA official later admitted its insufficient oversight of the program and its personnel have since worked more closely with Boeing employees, looking over the space giant's shoulder as it has addressed software errors, corroded valves, and parachute concerns. But as you can see, everything seems to be unchanged. The crew flight test this year, even though being praised as a success or peak performance, we see the appearance of fresh problems, a helium leak and a design vulnerability in the propulsion system. Ironically, while the public knows clearly how badly Starliner is suffering, NASA still sought to conceal and downplay the severity of the problem. It's so funny how its attempts to refute any stuckness narrative have been both ineffective and baffling. They repeatedly insist that the astronauts are not in dire straits, but imagine what if you were stuck in space for roughly two months with the limitation of food, water, and personal items with no certainty of a return date. I have recently heard the story that just before liftoff, NASA unloaded the luggage of those astronauts that contained some personal items, like their changes of clothing, because the space agency needed the space for a new pump to help recycle liquid waste into drinkable water. Of course, this is not a big deal for the old veterans like Butch and Suni but it will make more sense if that journey just lasts one week. Think about that over your morning coffee. 
Additionally, NASA maintains that Starliner is safe enough not to need a rescue mission from SpaceX's trusty Crew Dragon. In response, Eric Berger, senior space editor at Ars Technica said, it's clear NASA does not want to deviate from its base plan of using Starliner to come home, and this remains most likely, but it is not certain. SpaceX and NASA have been quietly studying launching Crew-9-2 astronauts. Suits are available for Butch and Sunni. No doubt NASA realized long ago that Starliner was not safe at all, and they needed more time to rake Starliner with a fine-tooth comb. This explains the retired astronauts' statement mentioned above. Of course, they don't feel comfortable putting them in the vehicle, otherwise they would have put them in it already. NASA does not dare to admit it outright perhaps because they don't want to create favorable conditions for more sensationalist coverage, as well as protect Boeing's already bruised face. Nevertheless, in fact, they gave up on the Boeing Starliner a long time ago. Indeed, in 2022, less than a week after Boeing's Orbital Flight Test 2, NASA awarded all the final flights needed to keep the space station fully occupied into the year 2030 for SpaceX's Dragon. Meanwhile, NASA has yet to announce the purchase of additional Starliner missions. The agency only plans to fly two crewed space station missions a year, with four astronauts aboard each. SpaceX would be contracted for 10 additional missions, and Boeing has six on the books. There are eight years of lifetime left in the space station if it stops flying in 2030. While additional modifications to these contracts are always possible, NASA appears to have booked all of the rides it needs for a station lifetime into 2030. NASA's partner, Boeing, has also gradually become indifferent to the Starliner project, as well as other space and defense projects. Their very first move is the intention to sell its cash cow, ULA, to the potential buyer, Blue Origin. The space and defense sector is just the company's secondary revenue, but its loss is significant, especially since Starliner cost the company $1.5 billion. Cutting investment in this sector could help the company save more resources, thus focusing more on the commercial airplane's business, its financial juggernaut, which has been facing a huge crisis. According to the update of NASA and Boeing, on July 27th, the Starliner crew and ground teams completed a docked hot fire test of the spacecraft's reaction control system, RCS, thrusters. Also, its helium system was monitored, providing additional data points for the crew flight tests returned to Earth. The result, as they said, is optimistic. Both teams were very happy with the results. This is the second time the spacecraft has been hot-fired successfully while docked. An integrated operation the station and Starliner teams will also conduct during future long-duration missions. This week, there will be a lot of work needed to do ahead of an agency readiness review, which plays a vital shoulder in considering whether Starliner can bring astronauts home or call SpaceX Dragon for help. Those works include, first, evaluate the results of the test firings over the next few days as they work through overall studies. Second, flight test astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams will participate in two undock-to-landing simulations. Last but not least, a flight test readiness review is tentatively planned based on the data gathered from the last week's test. While a landing date has not yet been set, opportunities are available throughout August. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.